This data shows the chemotaxis index calculated for nematode worms having been subjected to three levels of pretreatment using a therapeutic drug at levels of 0, 1 and 2. We wish to test whether the different levels of pretreatment affect the chemotaxis index. And for this, we will use the one-way ANOVAR and also the non-parametric equivalent, the Kruskal wallace test. In a separate video, we have already checked the normality and equality of variance conditions required before using the ANOVAR. So we will proceed with STATS, Analysis of Variance, and in this case we will use the general linear model, and we must fit the general linear model before any of these other options here become available. So we will fit general linear model. The response in this case is the, is the chemotaxis index, and the factor is the treatment. Under graphs, we can choose to plot the residuals, which will give us information about the normality and equality of variance conditions. And we can plot the standardized residuals. And in this case, we will choose to plot four residual plots in one. We click OK. And then we can run the analysis. The plots for the residuals we have seen before. This top left hand plot allows us to check the normality of the residuals. And this diagonal line represents where we would expect to see the data for exact normality. And we can see that our experimental data points are fairly closely spread around this line, suggesting that we can indeed accept the normality of the data. The top right hand plot here shows the variation of residuals at the different levels of treatment. And we can see that the spread of the residuals is very similar at all levels, suggesting that we can accept the homogeneity of variance conditions for this ANOVAR. The numerical results of the ANOVAR will appear in the session window, where we can see the results for the treatment factor, and the table gives us the variability between treatments, and error is the variability within the treatments. The F value calculates the ratio of this variability, and then the P value gives us the significance resulting from the F test, which in this case, with a value which is less than 0.0005, the p-value suggests that we can reject the null hypothesis and that there is indeed a significant difference between at least two levels of treatment. If we wish to see where this difference lies, we need to go back to STAT, ANOVAR, General Linear Model, and now that we have fitted the model, we can see other options are available, and we can take the factor plots, and we see that we have, for the response C index, we have selected treatment as the relevant factor. And under graphs, we can see that we're going to plot the main effects. So we click OK, OK. And this shows us the main effect for treatment. So we can see that the mean levels of C index for each treatment level appear to decrease as we go from zero to one to two levels of treatment. We can now look for where the differences might lie between these different levels of treatment. So we go to STAT, ANOVAR, General Linear Model, and now we can select Comparisons. The response is C index, and under Type of Comparison, we can either have pairwise or comparison with a control. So we don't have a specific control in this experiment, so we select pairwise between all three levels of treatment. Under method, we could use Tukey, Fischer, Bonferroni, or SIDAC, but we will use the Tukey method. 
we must confirm which factor we wish to test for comparison. So we click on treatment and we now see a C which confirms that we're comparing levels uh, for this particular factor. And then under results we'll request grouping information and we will also request tests and confidence intervals. And under graphs we will get the interval plot for differences of means. So we will click OK and then we will run the comparison OK. This plot shows the confidence intervals for the differences between each pair of levels. So at the top here we get the confidence interval for the difference between treatment levels 0 and 1. And we can see that this confidence interval for the difference actually includes the possibility that the difference could be 0. So that we cannot be confident that there is a difference between level 0 and level 1. However, if we look for the difference between level 0 and level 2, then the confidence interval here does not include the possibility that the difference could be zero. So this tells us that the significant difference does occur between level zero and level two. And then also if we look at the difference between level one and level two, again the confidence interval does not include zero. So here we see significant differences between levels one and two between levels 0 and 2, but not necessarily between levels 0 and 1. This same information is all also given in the session window, in that if we look at the grouping information, each level of treatment is given grouping letters, and if two levels share a letter, then they are not significantly different. So, for example, level 0 and 1 both have grouping letters A. So, there is not a significant difference between level 0 and 1. But level 2 has grouping letter B. So, level 2 is significantly different from both level 0 and 1. We also have the numerical values for the actual confidence intervals that we saw in the graph. And these come with a p-value to show the significance of a possible difference. And this confirms what we've seen before, in that between levels 2 and 0 there is a very significant difference. Between levels 2 and 1 there is also a significant difference with a p-value of 0 0.016. But between levels 0 and 1 the difference is not significant with a p-value of 0.073. In this previous analysis using the general linear model, the analysis of residuals showed that the normality and equality of variance conditions were satisfied and it was viable to use the analysis of variance calculation. However, from the point of view of demonstration, we will also use the non-parametric equivalent of the one-way ANOVAR, which is the Kruskal wallis test. In this case, the response, again, is the C-index, the factor is treatment, and then we quite simply run the analysis. And in this case, we get a p-value for the Kruskal wallis test of 0 0.001, again a significant result, showing that there is a difference in the median values between at least two of the levels of treatment. If we wanted to identify where the differences lie between the three levels of treatment, we could use the Mann-Whitney test between individual pairs of levels of treatment. But because we would be doing multiple tests, we should use the Bonferroni correction to modify the levels of criteria we use for each particular test.